So rocking some science socks on my chicken legs just is a good reminder that we're really about this greater goal of the science. And it's kind of cheesy and cliche maybe, but it's also kind of fun. You know, it's just fun to wear fun socks, so. A lot of people think a software engineer just sits in front of a computer all day, maybe in a dark room, pounding energy drinks and just like banging away on a keyboard. And actually, a software engineer here does a much wider variety of work. And honestly, the job that I have now didn't even exist back when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. I always had a bent towards mechanical things and I was always interested as a kid in just breaking things open and seeing what was inside. It was in the second grade actually for my birthday, my dad got me this little kit from Radio Shack and it was a VHF radio receiver. I was living on the East Coast for a couple years, kind of right near the flight path to JFK Airport. There were resistors and transistors and diodes and all this stuff that you'd hook together with springs and wires. I didn't know how it all worked, but I knew putting these things together and following the directions allowed me to turn this little dial and listen to these airplanes. So my dad had a PhD in chemistry and a master's degree in math, and I failed both chemistry and math in high school. That is a yearbook. Let's see here. I was voted closet comedian right there. I really enjoyed the outdoors growing up. I think largely because if I was at home, I would have to do chores. Some of my teachers growing up got me interested in rock climbing, learning some of those geometry applications when you're hanging from a rope and not just in a classroom. It really helped uh, motivate me and get me through those rather boring exercises in class. I didn't know much about the ocean growing up. I was in an inland neighborhood, pretty landlocked. In high school, I had the opportunity to go on a marine biology trip out to Catalina Island off uh, the coast of California. I just recall arriving and looking out and the water was just emerald clear and there were leopard sharks swimming around right near the beach. I just couldn't believe how awesome it was and totally fell in love with the place. When you look out from a boat, all you see is blue, and you don't really realize what's going on under there. It's not a desert. There's these little patches of life, and you combine all those little patches across the entire ocean, and suddenly you've got this huge biological influence on the planet. My official degree is computer science. I had an emphasis in electrical engineering. Aviation was always something that interested me. So right out of school, I took a job in aerospace with the pleated khaki pants and the cubicle and the no windows. It was just really hard to be creative. It felt like a little bit more of a machine, you know, cranking things out. And Bari was a, was a website that I frequently checked out. It had these cool ships and these cool vehicles and I found it kind of interesting and began thinking what it might be like to to work more on, on robots that fly through the ocean instead of you know through the air. 
Yeah, I, I applied to various jobs at Invari for I think over the course of about three years. And they would often just send back that little like rejection card, thanks so much for applying for a job and then you know fill in the blank. And then I think one day they must have run out of the little cards and I got hired as a software engineer. In this situation. If I make a little software change at two in the afternoon, I can go out and by three o'clock it can be offshore being tested. There's not just one way to do something. Sometimes that can be really frustrating and you get a bunch of engineers in a room and it's like trying to order a pizza, you know, you can never settle on a design. And that's often because there's no right answer. It's more emotional when you can't find it. That kind of sucks. Part of the process of innovating is, is failing and sometimes failure is completely out of your control. And we've had AEVs come back with shark's teeth in them. What are you going to do when your robot gets bit by a shark? When you have the setbacks, keep a positive attitude and there's always something to laugh about and you'll have some good stories at the end of the day. There's a little bit of STEM everywhere in our lives. Keep pursuing those interests that you have, they're there for a reason and maybe that job that you want doesn't even exist right now. I drive this thing. <laughs>